Praise the Lord. If everybody wants to come in and get ready to worship the Lord tonight, and all you guys that are in the back, check, check, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? I'm going to wait. Hey, I get to do the announcements again, and this time I get a list, so you got to listen. Last time I didn't have a list, and they let me up here doing the announcements, and I got them all wrong. How many are glad and happy to be here tonight? All right, let's do it again. How many is happy to be here to worship the Lord tonight? Let's talk about some announcements. On March the 6th, everybody listening? I'm a, I'm a, there's going to be a test after church. March 6th, Taco Bar after 6 p.m. worship. It's the Easter celebration fundraiser. The donations are being accepted for this fundraiser. Apparently that mic wasn't good enough. It says, uh... It says, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. It says, reaching the kingdom of God with reaching out to our community. Okay? Let me read that one again. It says, on March 6th. Everybody say March 6th. Okay, is the taco bar after the 6 p.m. worship. Okay? It's the Easter celebration fundraiser. Donations are being accepted for the fundraiser. So that means everybody's got to pay 20 bucks. Isn't that what it means? No? Okay, so I guess it's just whatever you got in your pocket. Okay. March 14th through 19th is our wonderful Pastor's Appreciation Day. Everybody give the pastor a good clap. Stacy Hill's back here booing the pastor. Pastor, where are you at? You're going to have to get on Stacy. March 14th through the 19th is Pastor Appreciation Week. It says, it says uh, with love offering on March the 20th at 10.30 a.m. worship. It says, we want to show our pastor how much we appreciate him by showing up on the 20th. So that means get as many people as you can to come to the church. Uh, is the pastor preaching that day? Does anybody know? Probably not. Tony Ritchie. See, that's not on my list. We got Tony Ritchie as a guest speaker for that whole week. Just that Sunday morning, okay. It says, get with Audra for meals that week. I guess we're going to be giving the pastor meals. I guarantee you won't have me do this again. Come on up here. Come on. Come on, they're still talking. They're not listening. Come on. Come on. Hurry. Do the pastor appreciation announcement. It's important. Yeah, come out. We want to pack the house. Um... Uh, if pastors ever did anything uh, that's impacted your life or um, that you know of anyone, invite them. We want to fill the house. The meals. Um, get with Aldra um, and sign up uh, to bring a meal um, each night for them. There will be a love offering taken up that Sunday morning. Um, I think that's about it that's for the good. love. Good, good, good job. Everybody give her a hand clap of praise. Hand clap. She didn't do very good. She didn't do much better than I did. <laughs> okay, and then April the 16th. Everybody say April the 16th. Is the Easter celebration from 2 to 4. Okay? We got prizes, eggs, and more. More information coming soon. Some sneak peek of some prizes going to be given away. They're going to give away $500 cash. Can anybody sign up for that? Okay, they're going to give an Oculus Quest 2 away. Now, let me tell you something about this gift. I do boxing on this. My shoulders are killing me. Okay, so, but that's an Oculus 2. It's like a virtual reality. That's pretty cool. Um, and more. It says prizes will be distributed after morning worship on April the 17th. So that's the next day after the Saturday, I'm assuming. It says you must be present to receive those. All right, so we got March the 6th is the taco bar. March 14th through the 19th is the pastor appreciation week. We really want to show the pastor that we love him. He does so much for this church, so much for the people around here. 
Uh, so let's just be sure that week that we, or any week or any day, that we just give the pastor wonderful appreciation. Sheriff, what you got, brother? Two, three? Twenty-three. He needs a lot of help. Sheriff needs a lot of help with the cage raise. Hey, all you guys, uh, there's a King's Table Conference. I'll remind you again, it's April the 28th through the 30th. Uh, see me if you want to uh, get a ticket for that. and Just let me know before then. All righty. And if everybody will stand, we got Brother Larry coming over here to give us a scripture and bring us into the worship. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Give God glory. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Psalms 93. I'm going to make y'all stand through the whole chapter. Of course, it's only five verses, so. <laughs> it says, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girded himself the world also established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier. Get this. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forever. And give him glory. Come on now. Come on. We're here to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're here to give him glory tonight. Hallelujah. He overcomes. Whoa, glory. He overcomes the storms in your life. No matter how big the waves are. Our God overcometh. He is mighty. He is majestic. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is our strong tower. It's time to worship the Lord tonight. It's time, if you've got a problem in your life, to give it to God. Amen. It's time to trust God. Hallelujah. Man, we just believe God's going to do great things in this place. We believe tonight that needs can be met. We believe souls can be saved. We believe that God can do anything that we put before him. on. And right now we're going to ask every one of you that has a pressing need in your life to lift your hands to God right now. Now, tell God, I trust you, Lord. Do you really mean it? I didn't hear that. Yes. I trust you, God. I give my trouble to you, Lord. Because your hand is raised, keep it raised tonight. Now, everybody, raise your hands. We're going to agree with them that God is going to move in their need tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God to come into our presence tonight. Let's do it with thanksgiving. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. We honor you. We glorify you, Lord. We ask you to move in a mighty way in this service tonight. God, we invite your presence into this place tonight, Lord. We believe, God, we have declared that you are going to move in these needs tonight, Lord. We just believe it, God. We trust in you, God. We give it to you, Lord. And right now, God, from the depths of our heart, as we agree together, is touching these things that are bothering your children. God, we're believing that you're going to move in a mighty way in this service, God. We thank you for being here and meeting every need in this church tonight. And the church said, amen.
That means ready to be happy over there tonight. You know, I don't think it's going to be too long before we're going to get called up yonder and be happy over there because with everything that's going on right now, it's just a matter of time. Um, but as a, as a offering place, and are you here tonight? And it's time to give in our tithe and our offerings into the church tonight. I want to ask you a question. How many is to receive here tonight? How many, how many is ready to receive? I didn't say give. I said receive. Because whenever we give unto God, we receive more than we can handle. And the scripture tells us tonight in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, which is a popular scripture that goes along with giving. A lot of us probably know it by memory, but it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there be not, may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. And this is what I like. If I, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. How many is glad to know tonight that when you give to God, you don't have enough room to receive what he has in store for you in this place tonight. I'm so glad that I serve a guy that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. I'm so glad I serve a God tonight that no matter what we ask in his name, it shall and it will be done. And we can't challenge God enough because no matter how much we think we have that we can do things on our own, we never can give what God can give back to us. And I'm so glad tonight that I serve a God that no matter what we do, no matter what we make, no matter what wages we make, God will always give us more than what we can handle. And I thank him for that tonight. Let's all pray tonight that the Lord, Lord will, uh, will bless this offering and multiply it to be used for his will in this place tonight. God, we thank you again for your goodness. God, we thank you tonight, Lord, that we have income. Lord, we thank you tonight, tonight that we have a job. And, Lord, I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that even though we look around us and everything is going up, Lord, I pray right now, no matter what we see, gas prices, grocery prices, everything around us is going up, Lord, but we know that you will still take care of us through all this mess that we're going through right now. God, help us not to worry. Help us not to worry about the things around us, Lord, because we know that you are over gas prices. You are over grocery prices. You are over all these things. And as long as we count and depend on you, you will always provide for our needs each and every day. And we thank you for that tonight, Lord. God, we ask you right now that 
as everyone gives in this offering tonight, Lord Jesus. Touch the ones to give. Multiply this offering. Let it be used for your glory, Lord Jesus. And God, we just give you all the thanks. We give you all the praise for all that you've done and what you're going to continue to do. Bless your people tonight as they give. In your name we pray. Amen.
about to sing this song, it's called Sea of Victory, and I'm not, I've told a couple of people about this, but I want to give a, just a little bit of a testimony about, it's been a year ago in March, uh, I'll just be honest, the devil came in and tore my family all to pieces. My mom and dad had been married for almost 50 years, and he just pretty much left her and started seeing another woman. And it's okay if I tell this because he would tell you the same thing. And he pretty much left her, left the whole family, and for about eight, nine months went and pretty much adopted her family and just took them in. And it was really hard. My mom was devastated. You know, the kids were devastated. We were all just crushed. But we, we said, you know what? We're not going to stand and let the devil take our family. We're not going to stand. So me and my mom, we started binding together. And we, were, we found, you know, scriptures about salvation. We found scriptures about deliverance. We found scriptures that we would pray and we would believe together every day. We would pray and we would believe. And it seemed like it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And then about, probably about a month ago, well, it's probably about two months ago, my dad, this lady just said, I can't do this anymore. She said, you have a family. And she said, if I die today, she said, I'm not, you know, this is not pleasing to God. She said, this is not right. And she told him, said, we've got to stop this. So he came back home and he was, he was there, but he was kind of not there, if you know what I mean. He still was kind of, kind of torn. And uh, we did find out about a month ago that he's got Alzheimer's. But it seems like since then, it was like a wake-up call to him. But I want to tell you all what has happened in just the last month. He has came back home. He is completely set free. He has been, he has given his life back to Jesus. He has given his life back to the Lord. And even in the midst of all of this, he is just completely on fire for God now. He has completely been set free. And he is back with our family. Our family has been restored. Our family is completely whole. And even on top of this, he's going out now. And he is telling everybody that he knows. He said, I want to go out now and tell everybody that I know about what Jesus has done for me. He said, I want them to know that Jesus is Lord. That he's the Lord of my life and that he can save them. That if he can restore my family and my marriage, he can restore theirs. He can set their children free. And he is so on fire. And this is another thing. Last week, and I wanted to tell this because, you know, Pastor's been teaching on, on family and on marriage and stuff. And I want you to have hope that no matter what is going on, that God can restore it. That God can work miracles. And last week, my brother, who is not saved, had taken my dad out to dinner. And they were on their way back from Knoxville. And my dad has had not been able to hear out of, I think it's his right ear, for over a year. And he was coming down the road. This is after he's given his life back. He's on fire for God. And all of a sudden, he just hears a pop. They we went and bought him here at AIDS for his birthday. The, like, the day before, like a couple days before, and he'd been using them. He is going down the road, hears a pop, and his ears were completely open. He has complete hearing now. God worked a supernatural miracle in his life. And I just wanted to tell you all that. Now he says, I'm on fire for God. He says, I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to bring him here. He wants to get filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost, because he says, I want to be on fire. I want to be able to lay hands on other people and see them set free. So we're going to sing this song, and I'm believing. I'm singing this song over everybody in here that no matter what, that you can see a victory in whatever situation because it may seem dark, it may seem bleak, but God, God has the victory. He's already won the victory. You just keep praying. You just keep believing. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. Jesus. The weapon may be formed, but it 
won't prosper Oh, when the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph Oh, my God will never fail Oh, my God will never fail Cause I'm gonna see a victory And I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory There's power in the mighty name of Jesus And every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story Yes, I know how this story ends Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory
Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Oh, come on. You're going to see a victory. You're going to have to give him more praise than that. Hallelujah. Glory. You love the Lord tonight? Anybody got the victory besides me? Hey, can I tell you this? The devil has absolutely done everything he could up until this point to keep you from getting here. Now, you done got here. Amen. And let's not reflect on everything the enemy tried to do to you before you got here. Let's just reflect on this right here. Our God is good. He's got a plan for this service tonight. He wants to do something in your life tonight. How many believe that? I believe he wants to touch us. Amen. I believe he wants to help us. I believe he wants our faith to increase. Amen. I believe he wants to heal somebody, save somebody, set the captive free in this house tonight. I got three. Praise the Lord for three. Amen. He said, if any two be gathered together, I got at least, I got three, man. Praise the Lord. We get it, man. Amen. Reach down. <laughs> Pick up your Bible. I'm still working on getting used to this mic. Good to see Brother Bobby back there in the back. Let's give him a hand. He's a good little feller. Amen. I love him to death. He ain't tall like I am, but he's a good little feller. Amen. And good to see all of our visitors. Let's give our guests and visitors a good warm welcome tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you in the house of the living God. I mean, Judges chapter 8, uh, today was one of those wrestling days. I had a thought and uh, been working on for a while. Amen. Somebody texted me today, I don't know if I was going to do any more marriage sessions. I said, not on your life, man. Uh -uh. I've been doing marriage counseling by the droves since we started teaching on marriage. So uh, y'all on your own, I can tell you, amen. Call Norma, she, she'll talk to you. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. You know I will if you call me, amen. Judges chapter eight. I went back to the archives somewhat tonight for this uh, message. I had another one and just really felt like I needed to revisit this scripture here tonight and uh, uh, just felt like somebody would be here tonight needing to hear the words that's gonna be spoke from this pulpit, amen. Judges chapter 8, verse 4 and 5. If you're there, say amen. I'm in real trouble tonight because my, my camera back there, or my projector back there is out, and they didn't put it up here. So I'm, I'm going to... Okay, you fixing it? Okay. <laughs> verse 4 said, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint. And I'm pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. Let's pray together. Father, we're so thankful to be in the house of the Lord and each and every one that's came out. God, thank you for those, Lord, that are watching by Facebook. God, my heart's desire is tonight, Lord, is to completely and totally follow you tonight in your spirit. God, help me to preach, Lord, until you say stop. And God, I ask you, Lord, to open our hearts tonight to receive of the word of God. Let somebody that's wore out tonight let them get strength. God, for somebody that's pursuing God tonight, may they, ca may, may they catch the sacrifice tonight. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and everybody said, amen. amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Brother Chuck Heilman, one of our, old, uh, one of our older deacons that went on to be with the Lord, he used to get up all the time, and he'd say, if you, he'd say, he'd say, if you come on Sunday morning, he said, you, lo you love your church. He said, if you come on Sunday night, you love your pastor. If you come on Wednesday, you love the Lord. Amen. So it's good to see all you good people that love the Lord out here tonight. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I love this. Turn me down a little bit there. Don't let me blow them out. Where's B at? Wave at me. See here? Who's Okay, his daddy's up there. Okay, don't, don't let me blow them out. I love the story of Gideon. Uh, he, was a, he was a nobody through the power of God became somebody. Can I just tell you this, that God always wants to use the most unlikely people. 
He, he, he ne I said this before, but it's worth saying again, amen. When he was looking for somebody to preach on Pentecost, he, he, he moved past the articulate and he moved past those great orators and he moved past the educated, amen. He said, no, no, no. He said, get them out of the way. He said, give me that line, cussing, ear cutting off Peter. That's who I want to preach on the day of Pentecost, amen. And he, he always wants to use the most unlikely people. And, and for those people, I, I had a good friend of mine. I love him, amen. I hope he's watching tonight. I hope he's saved tonight. I don't know if he is or not, amen. But, but you can't ever tell about him. But this thing, when he got called to preach, he said, uh, he just jumped up, man, on a hickory stump and said, boy, let me tell you what, and, and just went at it, you know. And, and, and he told me one time, he, he was making fun of me. He said, you know, he said, you'll lay on the floor for four, six, eight hours, cry, beat your head in the floor. He said, it's all good. He said, you can't preach 10 minutes. He said, watch this. He'd throw a Bible open. He preached like a madman, but he never could stay in church long enough to have any influence on anybody. Amen. But I want you to understand the unlikely people, that's who God's looking for. The ones, God loves to take the foolish things and confound the wisdom of the wise. Amen. He, he loves, amen, to use those people. And see, and I want you to know tonight, amen, if you're sitting under the sound of my voice and you've disqualified yourself for whatever reason, amen, God has not disqualified you. Amen. How many of you understand with me tonight that little is more? much when God gets involved in it. Amen. Somebody give him a little praise right there. Gideon is proof that if we'll be willing, God can do great things in our lives. You know, something, the, can I just tell you this? People that have achieved great things don't have anything different from you have. They have two eyeballs. They have 10 fingers, 10 toes, a nose and a mouth. Amen. Two ears. Come on, somebody. And you know what? The, the difference is, is what you think in your mind. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're exactly right. Amen. And the problem that we have today is we fight an enemy that's always telling us that we're less than. Amen. We fight an enemy tonight that's always telling us he's trying to set the limits on your life. Amen. He wants to set limits on your life because he's afraid that you'll reach everything that God has put in your life to, uh, 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 to finish out and do. He's put limits on your life because he knows the potential that lies on the inside of you. And you know something, I want you to understand, he don't know, the, he don't know what your future is, but he can see the potential in your life. He knows if you ever figure out that Christ is in you, the hope of glory, amen, he's in trouble. He knows tonight, amen, that if you figure out that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, amen, then he's in trouble. He knows if you ever figure out that you can lay hands on the sick and see them recover, amen, he knows he's in trouble. He knows tonight, amen, that there's a, a great big God that lives down on the inside of you and all things are possible to them that believe. He understands that and he's doing everything in his power to discourage you from being what God called you to be. Amen. Philippians 4 13 said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Can I tell somebody, amen, that it's God in you. Amen. It's God to win it. God that works in you. Amen. It's not you and as long as you can stay humble, God can use you. When you begin to think that you you deserve these things and you're in trouble. Amen. It's not by might tonight. It's not by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. Somebody ought to give God just a little praise while we're trying to get her going this morning or tonight. I mean, preachers never know if it's morning or night, do we? Amen. Every time we come in in the morning, we're saying it's night. We come in in the night, we say it's morning. Amen. Second Corinthians 9 and 8 said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Look at your neighbor and say, God is able tonight. He's able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Now stop with me just for a second. Let me talk to your heart just for a second. Can I tell you this? Somebody, I, I tell people all the time, I say, I don't worry about nothing. I said, the only concern that I have is for the lost. I don't, I don't worry about nothing else. I, I refuse to, because of that scripture right there. That scripture says that God is able to make all grace abound toward me. Amen. That, ha, that ye always have an all sufficiency. Efficiency. So can I just tell you this? You are wasting your time worrying about a light bill. You're wasting your time, amen. If you're if you're with if you're in covenant with God with your money, I should say, amen. If you're in covenant with God with your money, you're wasting your time tonight, amen. Worrying about light bills, how you gonna pay this and how you
you going to pay that? Amen. Because God is able. I, I, you know something? If I can't teach you nothing else, I want you to understand that God is able and he wants to work through you. That's the problem we have. We know ourselves. Amen. We understand why God would bless this one or that one. But we don't understand why God would help us because we know ourselves. Right? But the scripture said that God was able to make all grace abound toward you that having all sufficiency. Can I tell you tonight? Amen. It was not. Amen. T.H. I told somebody, I said, listen, I said, Noah Allen built that building over there on the right side. Tony Collins built that one and God built this one. Amen. I don't know how to build buildings. It was God. It had to be the Lord and the good people of God at Mount Vale with all sufficiency. God moved and made a way. Amen. And making er that you might abound unto every good work. When you set your mind upon the gospel of Jesus Christ and to do a good work for him, amen, all grace will come to you and empower you. Can I say this about grace? Amen. I know we teach grace. Amen. I, I believe in it. You believe in it. It's not of works of righteousness lest any man should boast but it is the gift of God. But the grace of God teaches you and me to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Amen. Come on. There's a teaching grace and God is trying to teach the church. Amen. That it's time to get up off our blessed assurance. Amen. And go after that which he died for. Somebody believes that I'll give him a praise. Amen. There's an enabling grace. There's an enabling grace to make it through every trial, every test that you must say. There is an enabling, listen, I know this for a fact. There is an enabling grace to pastor 50 people. There is an enabling grace to pastor 100. There's an enabling grace to be a clerk, a Sunday school teacher. There's an, an enabling grace to be a deacon. You have to have the grace of God upon you, amen, to do whatever it is you're going to do for God. You must understand that he wants you to abound under every good work and know that the grace of God has undergirded you and given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means harm you. If you believe that, give him a little hand clap of praise. Amen. 1 Timothy 1.12 said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me. Touch your neighbor and say, he's enabling me. He's enabling me. Can I, I, I'll tell you a funny story if you won't laugh at me. Uh, yeah, y'all know I'm a, like, I like motorcycles and old greasy cars, and, and I'm always wrenching on something. And uh, so uh, uh, my wife bought me a little old uh, mini bike thing so I could ride it. To, you shut up, Jerry. I don't even like you no more. And uh, I meant that with the love of Christ. I want you to understand. I said that with all the love I could muster for the moment. So I called Jerry. I said, man, I said, dude, the thing ain't going to, it won't run. Not only it won't run, but Norma's won't run neither. She got one. I bought her a 1978 Honda moped. Did y'all see that thing? It's bad. Little old moped. Hey, and, and the last one she rode, there was a, a candlestick bush and a mailbox jumped out in front of her and liked to kill her. And, uh, but I'm teaching her to ride. And, but I couldn't make hers run, and that wouldn't run neither. And I told Jerry, I said, come on, man. I said, something wrong with a pet cock. Something, something is not right with the thing. It, it's got 28 miles on it. It ought to run. That thing ought to fall right up. Just touch the starter on it. Just a little bitty thing. And, uh, and uh, uh, anyway, we flew around there with it. And I, Jerry said, got any gas in? I said, yeah, look here. I took the cap off. And we looked down there. I said, how much do you think gas in there? He said, a little under half tank. I said, I'd say you about right. And we cracked around on a few, few minutes. I said, well, I said, you know what we do? I said, we'll put a little gas in just to see. Well, I didn't, what I didn't know is that tank ain't about that deep. It's this wide, but it's about that deep. And it looked like it had a half tank in it, but it was plum smack out. And then, and then enormous quick, I couldn't figure out what was happening. I, I said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to check the gas. I checked the gas. Guess what? Hers is out, too. Didn't have no gas, amen? And, and you know something? Can I just tell you this, amen? There's a lot of Christians in that place right there. They have all of the ability, amen? That little, that little thing she bought me will run 60 mile an hour with a big old ugly man like me on it right here, amen? It'll fly down the road. It'll go faster than I want to take it down the road, amen? And, but you know something? It had all the ability to haul all this at 60 mile an hour, but it couldn't do anything because it didn't have an internal enabling grace on it. Come on, somebody. 
It couldn't do anything till we filled the tank up. That's why we come to church. That's why we assemble ourselves to come in and get our gas tank filled up that we might run on and do a work for God. You got all the potential in the world if you fill that gas tank up. You can do great things for God if you get yourself filled up tonight. Amen. I, I was as close to, uh, to me and Brother Allen from uh, uh, Reinhardt Bonke. Anybody ever heard of Reinhardt Bonke? How many of you heard of him? Hey, listen, if you don't know who he was, he was, a, he, he was the baddest man on the planet, man. He come from Germany. He was a, he was a, he was a German evangelist. And, and look here, they would, they would line him up between, between telephone poles and it ex estimates 7, 10, 12 million people would come and he would stand and he would preach on healing bones and start popping back together, amen. And people would, that were crippled would get up as he preached. Not as he laid hands on them, and I'm not against that. But just as he preached, the power of God would fall. And, then, and, and, and I almost got to meet him before he died. I was this close to him one time and he was doing a book signing down in Knoxville. And, 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 uh, and this is what he said. They said, Brother Bonke, tell us, what is it makes you different from everybody else? He said, he said, I'm no different than nobody else. He said, this one thing I learned a long time ago in ministry, though. He said, I learned that God didn't want lukewarm and cold Christians. He said, I keep myself red hot for the Lord Jesus Christ that he might use me. You know what he had? He had an enabling grace with all sufficiency to do good works in the world during his lifetime. He laid hands on one, passed it on. I don't even know that guy's name. But that guy, guess what he's doing? He's preaching the word of God and bones are popping back into place. He's preaching salvation, millions getting saved. You know why? He learned from a man that taught him to keep his heart prepared and red hot for the move of God. So the moral story is don't run out of gas too fast, amen? And uh, you know, Jerry laughed at me. I just wondered if Jesus had to kill him. I was praying for mercy for him, and uh, hey man, God really, but God really calls the qualified people. He usually qualifies the called. Hey man, you and God are the majority. I want to talk to you about faint just for me. Anybody ever been faint besides me? Hey, uh, somebody, somebody hit me up Monday and said, I know it's uh, International Quit Day for all pastors and. Uh, I just want you to be encouraged. I said, I appreciate it. I need it. Amen. But uh, have you ever been just wore out with it? Amen. Just got tired and wore out and, and, and just with life, with everything going on. Hey, one of, the, one of the most momentous times of my life is when I turned off Fox News. Praise God. I didn't turn on CNN either. Amen. I turned it off. It kept me faint all the time. Every time I was watching that, amen, I was looking. I was seeing what was going on, and I'd watch the other side to see what was going on. Amen. I was always tore up. I was always faint. God tried to talk to me. I couldn't hear nothing. Amen. Except, uh, except for Fox News. Amen. And you got to understand with me, amen, sometimes in our lives, we have to put things to the side, amen, and focus on what really matters. Can I tell you, it don't matter what they, it don't matter what Joe Biden does. It don't matter what Putin does. Amen. It don't matter what they do in Ukraine, Russia. It don't matter what they do up the road and down the road. Here's what really matters. Amen. Here's what really matters is there's a lost and dying generation and we are the last generation. Amen. And Jesus has called the church to go get what he died for. So we got to prioritize. It's time to prioritize in the house. Listen, I, I had a fellow ask me one time at a state meeting. He said, tell me this. He said, how do you get all them Baptists coming to your church? I said, I'll tell you how I get them to come. I said, I don't preach on them. I don't treat them mean. I said, I'm good to them. And I said, they make the best church of God folk you ever met in your life. I said, and, 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 and people want to, when people come in from other denominations, they want to ostracize them and make them feel bad. Can I tell somebody tonight, there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one Lord over in all. Amen. There's one heaven tonight and they that are born again soon will see the coming of the king after a while. Amen. Amen. When you're faint, you're closer to giving up than any other time. Though. When you're faint, it's easier to quit than it is to go on. Gideon came to the Jordan and passed over. Much exhausted. Hey, you know, one thing that blew my mind about the Jordan, I was there twice. Uh, I was there twice. The thing that blew my mind about the Jordan was 
That was the barrier that, that held the children of God back more than once on more different, different occasions. Amen. Going into the promised land, all that stuff. You, can, if you can imagine with me, I can't understand. I, I mean, I'm old and I'm fat, but I mean, I could jump across some in places at the Jordan. I don't understand why they couldn't go across. It messed me up so bad I couldn't figure out why. And you know what? Sometimes it ain't the big things in life that stops us from doing what God called us to. It's a little bitty things you can just jump across if you just go ahead and do it. Amen. And I couldn't figure it out. I started looking at it, and I thought, man, I know it's deep down there. But I said, look up here. I said, you can jump across. I said, it's high up there on this side. You can jump and land on that other side. I said, I don't understand why they couldn't get across it. Amen. And you know what? Here's what we do in life. Amen. We look at everything as if no way. It ain't no way I'm going to be able to get across that. Ain't no way. And, our, and you know what? We have faith in reverse, which is called doubt. We begin to doubt God and say, well, I don't know. You know what? Here's what doubt does. Doubt does this. It stands on the bank of the Jordan, and it says, should I or could I? And faith says, I can, and leaps across the Jordan. And it's time that you and I realize something. Amen. There's always going to be a Jordan in our life. There's always going to be a mountain to climb. There's always going to be a river to swim across. Amen. And you got to make up in your mind, if God brought you to it, God will bring you through it. Amen. What, what, what's this right here? Daniel 725. And he speak and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. What's Daniel saying? He's prophesying about the end times. And Daniel was saying in these times that we're in right now, Daniel was saying he was he has come to wire us out. He's come to boggle the mind. Amen. Can I just tell you this? I told you this at the beginning. I don't worry about anything anymore. I'm concerned for the loss, but I ain't going to worry about it. Somebody said, what about Ukraine? I hate it. I'm praying for those good people who have lost their life over on the other side of the world and went into eternity, but I can't help it. They're not one thing I can do about it. It does not stop the move of God in East Tennessee and we need to be reaching everybody before they come here and start the same thing here. Somebody said, you worried about it? Not even one little bit. I'm not worried about it. I was reading about that pastor in, in Canada that came to, he came here and done a few little conferences, went back up there trying to help the truckers up there and they called him and they put him in a little bitty cell with no bed and they won't give him water every two, three days. Amen. And the people are praying for him. And I'm praying for him. I hope you do. But can I tell you that God's grace is sufficient for that man of God. He's standing up against the tyrants of Canada. Amen. And those people that are trying to take away the freedoms up there. And the grace of God will raise that man of God up and use him in this last day. Ain't it time to quit, baby. It's time to get ready. Isaiah 14, 28 said, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, and there's no searching of his understanding. Isaiah said, you haven't heard of the, you haven't, Isaiah said, haven't you heard your creator? He don't get tired, amen? And he's able to strengthen you, amen? And you got to understand with me, if he don't get tired, amen, he's able to strengthen me. But we get weary in our minds. The Bible said we'd reap if we faint not, amen? And we get weary in our minds and we start adding up, amen? Oh, my God, did you see how much groceries went up? Amen, oh, my God, amen? Did you see how much gas is? It jumped up $3, it jumped up uh, 30 cents all at once and I stand there and, and this one guy he pulled he was in front of me he comes back there man I mean he was tore smack up about uh, how high they was and I just smiled I said I got mine on sale he said how'd you do that I said it's going to be higher tomorrow it's the truth but you know what if it goes ten dollars a gallon the people of God will have gas to come to the house of God help me just a little bit it don't matter how much groceries go up you know something when they <coughs> when they ran when they ran the gas five, six dollars a gallon under Bush, and he had a big hand in that. I know y'all liked him too, amen. I don't trust none of them, amen. None of them. And it was five, six dollars a gallon under Bush, amen. And the groceries went up. They never did come back down. But you know what? From then to from then to now has been a long time. And you look this old boy and tell, I've been eating good. And I look at some of y'all and say, You've been eating good. It don't matter what the gas prices is, it don't matter what the groceries prices is. When it 
there was darkness all over the land of Egypt. There was light in the land of Goshen where God's people was. You'll need this message later. Just, just write this down on the date. I appreciate that way you can go back and watch it because you don't. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 29 said he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. God's word said, when I don't think I can go another mile, hold on. He will increase my strength. Too many people quit before their strength comes. Isaiah 40 and 31 said, but they that wait upon the Lord. What are you doing right now, preacher? I'm waiting on the Lord. I, I'm waiting on him. Amen. I mean, I'm waiting on him to come. I'm waiting on him to, I'm waiting on him to help me tonight. I'm waiting on him to light a fire under a few of y'all to help me tonight. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. When you're in the fight and you get weary, hold on. God is about to move again in your life. Amen. God won't let you run out of gas like I let myself run out of gas. Amen. God will, God will not leave you comfortless. Amen. God will not leave you without strength that the enemy might overtake you tonight. Amen. He's looking for a reason to... He's looking for a reason to strengthen you and to help you. But you know something? Can I tell you something about God? I found out about God. God goes with the goers. You know that? He goes with, he ain't gonna give you no strength if you're gonna lay back and eat tater chips and, and watch Phil Donahue, amen? He ain't gonna give you no strength, amen? But he goes with the goers. And you know what else he does? He does with the doers, amen? That's where God's found out. He's found with somebody out doing something, amen, for the kingdom, amen? He's going, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go do something for the kingdom of God, amen, then, then, then he'll go with you. If you're gonna do something for his kingdom, Guess what he'll do? He'll be helping you do what you're doing. Amen. And it's time that you and I realize, even though we get tired in the body, the flesh, the mind, things wear out. Amen. But God will renew your strength. Joel 3 and 10 said, But beat your plow, plow shares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I'm strong. So here's what we got to do. We got to walk around talking to the devil sometimes because he's talking to you. Why can't you talk back to him? Amen. Don't sit there. Amen. With your halo it on your horns and act like the devil don't ever talk to you and sometimes you listen to him amen but, but, but watch this if, if we're allowed to say let the weak say I'm strong then I want to say it to the devil <coughs> amen when you feel like you can't make another step and the devil says give up and quit say I'm strong devil it'll confuse the enemy the reason you and I can say we are strong in a weak time is we know God is our source we ain't never going to run out I was told that when I come to pasture 18 years ago this month amen when I come to be the pastor here they said he'll run out he ain't smart enough they was right I ain't smart enough amen they was right on my own I would have run out and I was I was terrified I thought for sure their prophecies would come to pass but I found out something I am not my source amen I found out amen that his mercies is new every morning I found out amen that he would never leave me nor forsake me I found out amen I was a doer and God was going to help me do a work for him amen when you're weary with your finances you ought to tell the devil I'm strong if you're weary in your health you ought to say to the devil I am strong somebody said I can't get off the couch don't make no difference it's speaking those things that are not as though they be and God will move on your behalf somebody to give him a little praise amen I believe I could have got a nod out of the Presbyterians tonight they just said hallelujah 2 Corinthians I'm being mean 4 and 16 for the which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet our inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a, more, a far more exceeding an eternal weight in glory. This life is full of mountains and valleys, and there'll be times the outward man will want to quit, but if we'll hold on, God will renew the inward man. Amen. God will renew the inward man. Verse 5 now, he said, and he, he, he said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people and follow me, for they be faint, and I'm pursuing Zeba. Zalmunna, kings of Midian. What what are you uh, pursuing tonight? I mean, for real. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe I should ask you this: What are you running from tonight? Uh, you know, Christians spend more time running from things that ain't chasing them than anybody on the planet. 
Yeah, I mean, I know ain't none of y'all, ain't nobody in here, but if somebody watching my Facebook, they run from the devil tonight and don't even know what they're running from. I know I've used this illustration and stuff. My wife won't let me watch the booger movies no more, so I quit watching them, right? Everybody said, oh, you'll let the devil loose. I said, the devil don't want to come in my house, sweetheart. I'll put him out. He ain't bad. He just thinks he is, right? And uh, But I never forget. I used to watch this one all the time. I ain't watched them in a long time for all y'all to freak out on me. If y'all scared of them, be scared of them. I ain't afraid of it, right? I ain't scared of the devil, amen? But anyway, I was watching, and I got tickled because this guy, they're going in, and the camera guy, he goes in, and the booger jumps out. I don't know what happened. I didn't see nothing. I wanted to see it, you know? The booger jumps out, and, and the camera guy takes off running. You can see it, man. I mean, it's, he's done hit warp speed, man. He's coming out that house, and he's squalling, and I can hear the guy that's running the TV show. He's screaming, stop running, stop running. Dude runs, pull him out of the house. Now, listen, if you ain't got no nerve, you don't need to be out there booger hunting with a camera, you know what I'm saying? But if you ain't got no nerve, you can't really serve the Lord. You can't run from everything. The devil jumps up and hollers. I, I, people call me all the time, oh, my God, I got a pain. I, I, I think I got the cancer. I said, you probably did. What? I called you to get encouragement. You said I got cancer. I said, no, you said you had cancer. I said, I'm just agreeing with you. They said, what do you mean? I said, if you want to agree with me that you're healed, I believe that you ain't got no cancer. Somebody called me up. They, they said, I think I got the COVID. I said, I hope you do. He said, do what, preacher? You hope I got the COVID? I said, you got a better chance of surviving it than you do the flu. I said, I hope you ain't got neither one of them. I said, but you're going to have to stop saying that stuff out of your mouth. And we spend all of our life running from whatever the devil plants in our mind. And we turn on the TV, and we think we can believe it because it's on TV or on the internet. I've seen it on TV. It's got to be real. And you've got to know they have the technology now that they can do anything they want to, put anybody in any circumstance, in any situation, and make it look so real that you can't tell the difference. And we want to believe everything that's said on the television. I don't believe for one minute. You can get mad at me if you want to. I think Putin is a horrible guy. I think he's a murderous guy. But I don't think Putin is a dummy. And Putin don't even want the Ukraine. If he wanted it, he'd have got it under Obama in 2014 when he went in and Obama stood up and said, stop it. That's all he said. If he wanted it, he'd have got it then. He ain't even looking for that. Amen. I tell you this right here. I want you to know I believe we're living in the last days. Yes and amen. I believe that soon the Lord's about to come. But I come by to tell you this right here. Until he comes, I'm going to quit running from a war that, that, that I don't even know what they're fighting over. I'm going to quit running from I'm going to quit running from gas prices and food prices. Prices, and, and I'm going to quit running from the Dow Jones. I'm gonna, I ain't running from it no more. It's time that you and I realize that it's God that set us on earth at this time. It's God that ordained us to be here to win the lost. So now, what are you pursuing? You got to stop running and start pursuing Zeba. And I know some of y'all know this. The Hebrew word for zebra, zeba, is sacrifice. He said, I'm pursuing the sacrifice. Man, I could preach a month right there. If you don't say amen, I'm going to start right now. Amen. He said, I'm pursuing. Can I tell you this? Amen. The Mary and Martha thing. You remember that when Jesus came over? Amen. And, and he told, was it Martha? You're covered about many things. Amen. Or Martha, it was Mary that was covered about many things. And you know something? We're so covered about so many things in this world. Amen. And we worry about things that my mama would say this. She'd say, 100 years from now, honey, it ain't going to matter. Why are you worried about it for anyway? And you know what? If 100 years from now, it ain't going to matter, then don't worry about it. But eternity awaits. Amen. And those lost souls that we walk by, that matters. Amen. And 100 years from now, that will matter. And it's time that we start pursuing the sacrifice again. It's time to turn off the television turn off the telephone amen amen and it's time to turn off the internet and it's time to get in the presence of a living God that can change us it's time to pursue him and whoa, 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 watch this watch this right here watch this this is what Paul said I preach it every time I get in a pulpit I know but it fits right here Paul said I'm following after that I'm apprehended of he said I'm chasing him and he has me I don't understand it I can't explain it but he hides himself amen and he's hard to find but if you'll go after him if you'll pursue him if you'll seek him while he may be found you can find him tonight amen 
Amen. Well, that was my scripture. I done preached it. Philippians 3 and 12. Not as though I'd already attained either. We're already perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that which for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Amen. Paul said he got me and I'm still chasing him. And when you get faint, don't lose your heart for Jesus. Don't give up on the Lord. Can I tell you this? Uh, let's see. October of this coming year, me and my family will be attending the Mountville Church for 28 years, almost three decades. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I, can I tell you, I've had a lot more excuses than you have to backslide, I promise you. I have. I have. Amen. I, I, I promise you, I won't ever talk to you like I've been talked to. I, I promise. Amen. I, I want you to come. I'm glad you come. Amen. But I want you to understand, I want you to understand that it's time that you and I realize, amen, there's not going to be no excuse. If we're going to go to, listen, honey, if we can't go to church, we must not go to Walmart with them either. Let's not be a hypocrite about it. Amen. Because I want you to understand something. Listen to me right here. I want you to understand with me tonight. You can go to church with hypocrites, and there's a hypocrite in any church you go to. I don't care where you go. There's going to be one. There's backbiters. There's people that ain't going to act like a Christian. There's going to be people that don't do right. Amen. And you know what? If they hang around long enough and they hear enough word and faith begins to grow in them, they'll straighten themselves up. But you cannot. Amen. You can't justify yourself by saying, well, these hypocrites are. Well, guess what, sweetheart? These hypocrites are everywhere. Amen. I, I know I've told you this, but I walked up behind a guy, thought a $20 bill. He thought a $20 bill down a woman. Walked up and she marked that thing, said it ain't no good. I'm going to call the law. He jumps in, burns the wheels and leaves screaming and cussing and hollering I walk up paying her my $20 bill she marks it she gives me my change and I go out the door for everything that there is a counterfeit for there must be an original amen that is real I know amen that people aren't real sometimes I got you I feel you I know that amen but remember this amen if there is a counterfeit there must be one that's real and my job and your job is to be real tonight Amen. Amen. When you get faint, don't lose heart. As the psalmist said in Psalms 42, said as the heart of the full-grown buck deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Gideon said, I'm faint, but I'm pursuing after the sacrifice. There's been a lot of people who fell out of love with Jesus in a hard time. Listen, I'm not the prophet of doom, but I think we got some hard times ahead of us. I just think we do. Amen. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I believe we're leaving out before the great tribulation. I, uh, but you know something? The church has always been in tribulation. Amen. I, and uh, and you, you got to understand. Amen. There's a lot of people quit when things get hard and they get tough. And that just shows whether they really love the Lord or not. You know what? I come sometimes when I couldn't feel God. I come sometimes when people would folk was mean to me, amen, and I couldn't feel the Lord. And I come when I'd go home and sit and cry. And my wife say, what's wrong? I wouldn't even tell her. And I, my sister went on to be with the Lord, that big old tall girl used to come here. I wasn't sure I wouldn't tell her because she'd have whooped somebody. You know what I'm saying? She liked to fight anyway, amen? And, uh, and, uh, and I'm just telling you, the last three months of her life, she, she held her Bible and prayed till she about wore the pages out on the Bible and she was praying, amen? I believe she made it, but I'll tell you right now, if I'd have told her a few things back then, the fight would have been on. And I want you to understand, these times I felt like giving up, you felt like giving up, but when I think about the awesome sacrifice that Jesus made for me, how in the name of God could I quit? How could I throw in the towel, amen, on what he did for me at Calvary, amen? How in the world, I don't know, I've had the great privilege to be there twice. I saw, hint, 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 watch this, I saw where they lifted the, the vaccine mandates and amen they're allowing tourists in that's not been vaccinated amen so uh, uh you know i mean uh i want to go back one of these days and you know something i'm telling you this right here you don't know like i know what it is to stand on mount calvary and look amen and see the place where jesus you know what they didn't even kill him there come on somebody we tell that story wrong every time amen he said no man takes my life but i give it freely if he hadn't hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost his heart would have never stopped beating. I want you to know with me, there's no experience in the world like standing there and looking to the left of where I was and seeing the empty garden tomb where he arose on the third day. Can I tell you, quit 
For what? Go back to what? I want you to know we serve a risen Savior. We serve a God that's very much alive. And I refuse to give up this close to home tonight. Amen. Jeremiah 2 and 2 said, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. God said, I remember when you went after me when you didn't have nothing. Amen. Do you still go after God? Do you still, say, do you still seek him in the hard times? Jesus is coming, friend. Hold on a little while. Strength is coming your way. And the, and the, the other... The other one he was pursuing after was Almuna. It means shade has been denied. If the shade has been denied, it means you're walking in the light. Come on, somebody. You're walking in the sunshine if shade is denied. You know something we got to do? We got to walk in the sunshine. You know something? I, I want, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fair weather kind of guy. I'm a fair weather rider, motorcycle rider. I used to ride, man, when it's hailing and snowing and, and uh, wind blowing. You have to lean into the wind to keep that. I, I got old and I quit that crazy stuff. I don't do that no more, right? And uh, but you know something. You, you, you know something. Your duty and my duty today is to walk in the light. Last week it was rain all week long. It was, and, and you know what? I, and and I had to fight with that. I didn't. I didn't like it. I wanted the sun to shine. Amen. I wanted some vitamin D, man. I, I'm, I needed some help. You know what I'm saying? I needed some help out there. And every day, and I'd turn on Channel 10 News, and I'd watch that, and I'd turn it off. I said, I can't stand no more of that. I don't even like it. That's the only thing you tell the truth about. How many remember Margie Ison? Remember her? They say, Margie said it would, and it did, and that was a big slide it was. Margie was drunk every time she'd come in there. Amen? That's the truth. She was, she'd leave the bars, man, staggering out and go, and she never did get it right. They'd say, Margie said it wasn't, it did, and it did not, amen. It did not. But you know something, I want you to understand something. We got to come to the place, amen, that we're walking in the light no matter how dark it is outside. Can I tell you this, amen? Can I tell you this? The darker it gets out, the greater your light will shine. Even if it's a small light, it'll shine even that much more, amen? And the world is looking for somebody that's walking in, that's pursuing the Savior, pursuing the sacrifice, and walking in the light. How in the world are, you know something, we, we, the, I, I love you Pentecostal people. I'm one of you, amen. I'm one of y'all, all right. But I tell you right now, we miss it. We miss it as far as the day is long. Amen. God didn't save you so you could get the Holy Ghost speaking tongues and go in the dark, sweetheart. Amen. He gave you the Holy Ghost so that you, Acts 1 and 8, shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you to be a witness. It's time, amen. It's time that you and I realize, amen. I know it's a dark time. I know it's a fainting time. A lot of people are throwing in the towel. Amen. A lot of churches just went by the wayside and they're saying church attendance is in decline. I said, come on down Mount Bell. We're still growing. Amen. It's because we're pursuing the sacrifice. It's because we're walking in the light as he is in the light. Help me somebody. And it's time that you realize why you're here. Listen, this is why God, the mandate that he put on us, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and it's time if it's raining you gotta go amen if it's snowing you gotta go if it's dark outside you got to go shine the light of Jesus Christ amen amen can I encourage someone here tonight to hold on to your integrity in the dark times while you're faint amen first John 1 7 but if we walk in the light as he's in the light watch this I'm gonna slow down right here they're gonna come on to the music watch this but if, what, watch this. This is, this is a scary. This is not the scariest scripture for me, but this is a scary scripture for me. Look what it said. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, that sounds wonderful, don't it? Now watch. We have fellowship one with another. Oh, amen. Did it say that? Did your Bible say that? Oh, it does not. Yeah. Uh, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all. Do you, you, you get that? I, I know people get mad at me when I say this, but, but I, I personally, my opinion, okay? My personal opinion is the scripture says if we walk in the light, he's in the light, and we're having fellowship one with another, and we're in good standing with our brothers and sisters. It's a perpetual cleansing that comes from God. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all 
Let's see, in Galatians 6 and 9. My last scripture, aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. You survived another one. It said, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Can I tell you this? If you need help in the situation you're in, here's you some good advice. It won't cost you anything. Find somebody more shape than you and go help them. God will move heaven and earth to you. And be not weary and well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Big little word in there, if we faint not. Amen. Can I say this to you tonight? I know that we're living in some dark times. Somebody called me the other day and talking about how high the gas was. I said, I don't care if it's $10 a gallon. I don't care. I said, they said, oh, you got plenty of money. I said, no, I ain't got no more money. I said, I probably got less money than you got. I said, but I got a great big God. And I said, I ain't worried about the gas money. I ain't going to ride by there. Hey, I used to when I first started pastoring. Somebody gave me an old car. I didn't even have a car. you believe that? I, didn't, I mean, the one I had was, pfft, was gone. Somebody gave me another and it was about gone. And uh, I had it figured up to a science how much it cost me per mile. I'd ride by and I'd look at them gas prices and I'd look how far I'd been and I'd see how much it cost me. I'd just put gas in the thing and drive. You know what? And you can't, you can't, you, you, you know, you, you can't be weary with what's going on around us tonight, church, because we're in dark times. And you have to look at it this way right here. The God of all grace strategically put you in this world at this time. He don't mean for you to panic, cry, wring your hands, or dig a hole and live in a bomb shelter. He means for you to be light and salt in this world. He's calling to the church. He's saying, don't be weary. Don't give up now. We're too close. I know this is an old, old illustration, but... Uh, read it a bunch of times and just seen it your wall back again about an old man digging in a gold mine in California and all of his life he dug in that gold mine one day he just hung the pick up into the wall walked off and left it said I ain't gonna dig for it no more retired died out 40 years later a guy comes by picks up the pick puts a handle in it digs 6 inches hits the richest gold vein in the state of California in the history of California at this time. He was six inches away from everything he hoped for. And can I just tell you this? Don't give up on your faith now. We're too close home, Jim. We're about there. We're just about there. Won't be long we'll hear the sound of the trumpet. Won't be long all they that sleep in Jesus will God bring them in won't be long till the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord won't be long and I know I understand I, I'm not blind I'm not oblivious to what's going on I just refuse I just refuse to worry I just refuse to be upset about it because if God placed you here on this planet during this time there's a grace of God on your life to get you through this time you can do it. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. You can make it. Will you stand with me? Admittedly, I'm wanting to go a different route tonight. Felt like the leading of the Lord was coming this way. And he wouldn't have sent me this way, children, except he had somebody would be here tonight that's wore out, but still going. Still smiling, but inside you die. When nobody's looking, you cry. You get up every day and comb your hair and brush your teeth and go do it again. It just wore out come to encourage you there's a brighter day ahead and it might just very well be the rapture of the church we're sitting on the edge of it I believe 
heard a guy say this uh, yesterday, I think it was. I'm not saying this, so don't come at me after church and come, come at me, okay? He said, by all accounts, he said, I think the Lord will be back by September. I said, man, I hope he's right, but he put his neck out there and somebody's going to cut his head off. You watch that. I ain't making no predictions. I don't know. I'm just surprised he didn't come today, and he may come tonight. And if he don't come tonight, I'll be looking for him in the morning. For the Bible said, for those that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin and salvation. And I don't know about you, I'm just looking for him. I don't have time to be wore out with what they're doing. I don't, I don't even care. I don't care if he's the president or the resident. I don't care what he is. Don't make me no difference. I don't care. I don't care if it's Kamala, Biden, Trump. Don't make me no difference. I don't care. I don't care. Give it to Mitt Romney. He's been, he's been wanting it for a long time. Let him have it. Who cares? Because not very long, it's going to be a king. Splits the eastern sky. He's coming. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm certain of this right here. He's a man that he cannot lie. And he said, this is what he said. Well, what, what, what's what he said? He said in, uh, in John chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God? He said, it's a good thing. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. Under That's what he's fixing to do. He's fixing to come. And you think about this. I know I say it, but I can't help it. It's just in there. It's down in my spirit. I think about it a whole lot. He created everything you see right here in six days. He sat down and he rested, not because he's tired. For an example, for me and you, and he said it's good. And can I tell you this? He's been gone for over 2,000 years now preparing a place. Can you imagine the beauty that that city beholds? And he said, if I go and prepare that place, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, that's his plan. There you may be also. Lay his word, would you? I come to strengthen somebody tonight. I come to help somebody tonight. I come to tell somebody, please don't give up now. We're too close. Can I tell you, you ain't preached your best message. You ain't taught your best Sunday school lesson. You ain't won your last soul to God. Lord have need of you. He needs you to be fresh. He don't need you to be faint tonight. It's time for us to get our eyes off of what's happening all around the world and get our eyes off on what Jesus is about to do in this world. I'm opening the altar. I'm opening the altar for those that are faint, those that are tired, those that are weary. Tonight's a night of refreshing. If I was tired and I was faint, I'd come running. I, you know, they never had no trouble with me. I answered every altar call. I'm telling you right now, I answered. For years, I didn't miss a one. I hit every one they had and was glad to get the altars and cry and pray and ask God. Whatever they was preaching on, that was me. I was going to make sure that I got all I could get. Can I tell you tonight, I wouldn't leave this place discouraged. I wouldn't leave this place faint tonight. I wouldn't leave this place contemplating, giving up on God. I'd get down to these altars and I'd pray till I prayed through. Hey, I, I, talk, I talked to a preacher today. He's a friend of mine. I love him dearly. He's a good man. I love him. He, and he cried on the phone. He said, I'm wore out. He said, I'm wore out. I'm tired. He said, I'm, he said, I'm so tired. He said, I've been doing this longer than you have. I said, I know you have. He said, I'm wore out, preacher. He said, I need help. I said, man, I'm going to be praying for you. He said, I'm just telling you, I'm fixing to lay it all aside and get me a job. He said, I can't do this no more. I'm wore out. I said, brother, please don't do this. Please don't give up now. I said, please don't stop preaching now. I said, we need your voice in the earth. And I'm opening the altars for them tonight that feel like giving it up. For the altars, I'm opening the altars tonight for them that feel like throwing in the towel. And saying, what's it all for anyway? Every day's the same old stuff. I come by to tell you one day after a while, it won't be the same old stuff. One day after a while, the Lord himself shall deceive us. Come on. Come on. Some of you ladies gentlemen come on hurry run help some of these young people pray would you come would you come tonight hey listen ain't nobody gonna be up here wondering what you come from come for they gonna be glad you come and help you pray that's why we do it here we don't sit back in our seat and say wonder why they come we're just glad you showed up and glad you getting help tonight because we need you in the kingdom of god we need your voice we need your talent we need the abilities god put inside you and you can't operate if you're faint you can't operate if you wore out and it's time. The Bible said the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. He's here tonight. Would you come?
Oh, praise the Lord. Is your mind made up tonight to follow Him? Oh, do you know how much He loves you? Oh, hallelujah. God, it's been so good. What an awesome service. What an awesome God we serve. Oh, give Him some praise in this house right now. Oh, He's worthy, church. And I remember a little over eight years ago, I started coming to this church. And I was searching for a church. And I'd been to every church from Knoxville to Morristown to Dandridge and four or five churches. And the first time that I came here, TH preached a message, got yours. Got yours. And if you remember the first of this year, we started a campaign for 2022 to get 20 this year, each and every one of us. So let me ask you, have you got yours yet? Have you got any of yours yet? You know, I've been encouraging my Sunday school class to get out of their comfort zone. I got out of my comfort zone a little over a year ago because I've realized how much time we have left is fading very fast. And it's time if we're called and if greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world, it's up to us to let this world know that time is short and God loves them just the way they are and to bring them into the house. So this week, as we leave this building tonight, let's go out and get one before Sunday. Go get one and lead them to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Use us, Lord. Let us get out of our comfort zone and let us do more for the Lord. And Lord, as we leave this house, Lord, just anoint our footsteps, Lord, and Lord, lead us to that one that you want us to talk to, Lord. Lord, let us go get one for the kingdom of God, Lord, and use us, Lord, like never before, Lord. And Lord, let everything that we do give you all the glory and all the honor. And it's in the name of Jesus. Oh, one more time before we leave. Give him a hand clap of praise one more time. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You're dismissed. Don't forget, Sunday morning, 8.15 early service. Sunday school, if you haven't got one, I've got one right here at 9.30 in the morning. I will be traveling this weekend, but come on. Class is still in session. Find you a class and be here at 9.30. Service at 10.30 Sunday morning and 6 p.m. Sunday night. Don't be a smoke. You're dismissed in the name of Jesus. We love you.